Hi, welcome to Bearded Meeple. Now there are people out there that have literally played hundreds and hundreds of different types of games, and every now and then it can feel a little stale. But something will come along, pique your interest, and be like, wow, that was fantastic. And today's game did just that. It's for three to four players, ages 10 plus, and it plays anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour. It's a theme we've seen before, but how they presented it, I was blown away. We're talking about Zombie Tower 3D. Let's take a look at it. There are a number of components to the game. Let's take a look at them first, turn order, and then the tower. There are five playable characters. Each character has a character card. It will tell you where to start in the tower and how many life points you have. You'll also have a special ability and a place to store survivors. You'll have a beginning card. It's usually an item to help you out. You'll also have three minor objectives because if you actually survive and fulfill the card, you'll gain additional points. We have tokens to track your life as well as survivor and zombie tokens that will be placed in the tower. As you move through the levels of the tower, you will gain access to different cards, depending on what level you're on. Some cards are items, other cards pose danger. But you won't know what type of danger until you flip the card. It could be a cave-in, a fire hazard, or even more zombies. You'll need a vaccine to win the game for sure. If it has a yellow stripe, you have to announce the card immediately. Otherwise, you don't have to share information with the other players, but you might as well because you all survive together. You can even trade cards at different places in the tower. Each player also has a deck of 12 cards, as the game lasts 12 rounds. The cards, as played, will tell you how many survivors or zombies to place in the tower and where. Everyone performs the emergency phase at the same time. You will flip the top card of your deck. It will then tell you how many zombies to place in which room. You will then flip the next card. It will tell you how many survivors to place in the next room. During the action phase, you have three action points to spend. For one action point, you could move, search, rest, or use an item. For zero action points, you can save survivors, release survivors, or hand over an item, or pick it up. After using all your action points, you can perform additional actions by taking one damage per action. During the zombie phase, each player on their own side of the board will have to go floor by floor, room by room, adjusting zombie movement, based on whether or not there are zombies on the floor or in the room, as well as survivors and your character. The end of round phase is basically some cleanup. Any barricades might be removed. However, if you are trapped in a room with fire, any survivors or your character will die, hence losing the game. The starting player token will move to the next player and play continues. There are two ways to win the game. Secret passage, where everyone has a vaccine, Someone has both a communication device and a battery, and everyone ends in room 10 on their side of the board. Or you could win with helicopter rescue. Everyone has a vaccine, the total number of flares equal to the number of characters, and everyone ends in room 2. If you manage to survive, check the conditions on your objective cards. If you fulfill them, you'll gain the points and find out who the true winner is. It is fairly easy to die in the game though. If you're trapped in a room with a fire, you'll die. If you go through your deck twice, you'll die. Or if you exceed the life on your character card, you'll die as well. So to recap, it's emergency phase where you flip the cards and place survivors and zombies. You then use the action phase with your three action points to either move, search, rest, or even pass items. The zombies will then move based on what people are around. You then do some cleanup 
and gameplay continues. And that, my friends, is Zombie Tower 3D. A couple of things I would like to say. The base is double-sided, and you have the additional pieces you need to set the tower for four players. I thought it was a fantastic game, very easy to learn, plays quickly, and it's a heck of a lot of fun because of the hands-on experience. There are other three-dimensional games out there that are hugely popular, and if you like them, I really think you're going to like this one too. Yes, they could have just gone with Zombie Tower and made a flat two-dimensional board. It wouldn't have been nearly as good. This thing was awesome. I hope you get a chance to check it out. I'll talk to you again soon.